Hello again and welcome to Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. It's great to have you along as we broadcast here in the beautiful Arena Auditorium. And right downstairs behind us, you can see Maury Brown Court. Well, the Cowboys, uh, since we last visited, have played four games, all conference games, all big conference games. It all started a couple of weeks ago at Fresno State. This is a place where, well, just last year, the Cowboys won for the first time ever in Fresno. Tough place to play, and it certainly was a couple of weeks ago, Coach. Well, it was. We got off to a great start. Thought our assistant coaches did a great job preparing us. And then it was sort of Groundhog's Day. These next three games would be uh, three minutes to go in the game, uh, tie score, anybody can win. We came up short at Fresno, but, boy, I'll tell you what, those next ones were probably special Saturdays here at the AA. I'll say, and that leads right into that Saturday ago when the Cowboys hosted the old rival Colorado State. That was such a, a great game. And it was one of those games where you said Groundhog's Day, but the Cowboys closed the deal in this one. We did. Great crowd. Great student crowd. Great general crowd. Uh, It really seemed to me like the old double A in the 80s because it was loud. The energy was there from start to finish. And as you say, our guys did what they needed to do to finish that game and come up with a big, big game over CSU. Yeah, I thought this was a total team effort. The big three were certainly in evidence in that Colorado State game. And now you hit the road again as the Cowboys. Uh, this was quite a trek. It's quite a journey, uh, quite an adventure, actually, to get to Colorado Springs and then play the Air Force Academy on a snowy Tuesday night. Well, it was a snowy three days, and we left Sunday night on purpose because they got close to two feet of snow, Uh, but a good trip. Our guys were rested, and again, I thought our assistants did a great job getting them ready. We led by as many as 14 early, but boy, when the slide came in the second half and we missed some shots and they knocked them in, the energy completely changed at the Air Force. Again, three minutes to go. Anybody's game, we come up short. So after probably one of our most gratifying wins at home against CSU, we would lose to Air Force, come back this past Saturday again. A great opportunity for us. And the basketball gods definitely shined on us, Dave, that night. 20 made threes. Uh, everybody got in the act. I thought it was uh, very indicative of what the Cowboys would do. They come out in the Kenny Sailors number four shooting shirts, warming up, and I'll be darned, 20 threes, a Cowboy record. No Cowboy team had ever dropped that many threes in a single game. Uh, Boy, what a shooting display. Really, uh, especially in the second half, but right throughout the game, the Cowboys knocking down the trays. Yeah, we had 10 each half. and You know what? I I have a sneaking suspicion that old Kenny was up there slightly above the rim, just sort of manipulating that ball back through. But a great crowd, a great day. Uh, We don't usually win games by 20, so It really was a new feeling for this team and comes at the right time with this dead week. A little time for them to spend away from Coach Shy, a little time for Coach Shy to get on the road and do some recruiting. Coach, I thought uh, going back to that, to the uh, Utah State and even the Colorado State game, I thought the Cowboys got a great deal of energy, took a lot of energy from the crowd here in the double-A. I thought it really helped pick the Cowboys up in those two games. I couldn't agree more. And you know what? The the made shots were impressive, no question about it, record-setting. But I got to tell you that the 28 points we gave up the second half to a veteran, very talented offensive Utah State team meant a great deal because that's where we had been weak early in the year, in particular in big games. And it was good to see us steady the ship, play good defense, win the game on the glass. Hopefully it gives us a little impetus toward the tail end of the season. Yeah, this was kind of unusual. The Cowboys kind of cruised to the win here, taking nothing away from Utah State, Coach, but this was maybe the most comfortable win that the Cowboys have had this season. Now, unquestionably, first time in a long time. The timeouts were a little different. The vocabulary was much different. You bet. Well, big win for the Cowboys. Stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back right after this timeout. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Scheidt is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. The great Hall of Famer Kenny Sailors passed away about a week ago, and of course the Cowboys played with heavy hearts against Utah State. 
that it all turned out pretty well. He has a lasting effect on Cowboy basketball. Let's get some comments from some in the Wyoming Cowboy basketball family on Kenny Sailors. If, if a state had a mascot, it would be Kenny Sailors. And I, and I think that we are so fortunate to have had a man uh, that was that big. He was a big man who led a big life. And, and uh, I always respected being around him because he, basketball, he could never understand what was the big deal about it, what was the flap about, um, that he invented the jump shot. And, and uh, that kind of humbled nature is, uh, is so refreshing. And, but he was everything that you would want your life to be. Well, I don't really know if I can relate what Kenny meant to so many people in the state of Wyoming. I can assure you he meant a great deal to our program. And what I think rang the bell most to me was he spent as much time with my son Jeremy in his office as he did myself. He would talk often about the relationship of coach and player. He would reflect a lot about his coach here at Wyoming and some of the similarities. Uh, he had that level of toughness, but that soft spot as well. Um, Kenny will be sorely missed by so many of us. Um, I didn't know him as well as I wish I could have. Uh, he started coming to like one practice a year. Um, starting my freshman year, I think, and so you know we got a chance to meet him. Uh, every time he came, we got to, got to go over and introduce ourselves, shake our uh, shake his hand, uh, and whatnot. But um, uh, you know, just to have that that impact on our team and that kind of uh, influence. Uh, you know, everybody knew who he was. It's the only jersey in the rafters. Uh, so you know, it's really a, an awe-inspiring uh, situation to have him around. I mean, it was great. I mean, you look, we would look over and see him watch him practice, and there's a couple times. Um, I know we would get him, we'd meet him after practice and he would say a few things to us. Um, he was just a great guy to have around. Um, great to have him with the program. I mean, he's a, a living legend. Um, you know, he transcended the game. Uh, you know, Nate Smith invented it and then, you know, something that we all take for granted, like it's always been there, uh, is the jump shot. And especially for a guy like me uh, who really enjoys that aspect of the game, uh, you know, it means a lot to have that as a part of our history. Well, he was such a modest gentleman that I don't know if it meant as much to Kenny as it did this university and this state. I think the significance of not just winning a national championship, but being the MVP of both the NCAA and the NIT that same year, it rang a bell nationally. Uh, people like Bob Knight revered this man. When Bob did our game against San Diego State a year ago, he would come and visit Kenny and spend some quality time with him. To me, that's the significant. And what a disappointment that while he was with us, he wasn't in the Hall of Fame nationally yet, but that day is coming, and that's gonna be a proud moment for a lot of us, as well as Kenny and his dear wife. Uh, but the fact he's not in there is uh, just really a tragedy to me, um, because uh, there is a guy who, uh, more than anybody else, in, in the history of that game, revolutionized the game. And, and when a guy like Bobby Knight says that, and some of these other guys who are uh, totally giants in, in the sport, you're going, why isn't he in there? And hopefully one day he will be. Kenny Sailors have a lasting effect on Cowboy basketball and coach, uh, uh, his passing kind of signaled a, a wake up call maybe of sorts for the Cowboy basketball team. Uh, that first game after his passing Cowboys right there to uh, and, and this arena had a big, big game against Utah State. I thought he was with the team that night. Well, there's no question. All of our guys have had a chance, thank goodness, to meet, greet, and visit a little bit with Kenny Sailors in the past. I think he meant a great deal, not just to our team, but our staff. And this is a way to not only show the public how we feel about Kenny Sailors passing, but also maybe a little indentation of what a do really means to us and hopefully to all. If there was anybody, as I had mentioned earlier, who represented all three, aggressiveness, discipline, most of all, unselfish. He, he had a soft touch, tough guy, soft touch. And that was brought out by his son who did a wonderful job mm -hmm. with his eulogy. You bet. Kenny Sailors will be missed. You stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back right after this.
Well, she is a chip off daddy's block. Markel Dent has just been an outstanding cowgirl basketball player. And our own Kevin McKinney had a chance to sit down and visit with Markel Dent. Just working it around the perimeter. Now at the free throw line to Baker. Baker dribbles, kicks back out to Dent for the long three. Got it! Markel Dent, the three pointer, 1,001 points for that senior from Denver. Okay, when you came here, you were Sean Dent's daughter. <laughs> now you're Markel Dent. How proud are you of what you've accomplished and established for your own name at the school? Uh, it's a really great honor, I mean, to come out and do what I've done. I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, my dad always laughs and tells me that he gets recognized as Markel's dad instead of Sean Dent now, so it's kind of funny. And um, it's just a really great honor to follow in my dad's footsteps and kind of do my own thing here also. Do you still listen to him? Yeah, all the time. And um, sometimes we get in a little bit of arguments after the game just because he is my biggest critic, but also he is my biggest fan, which is really cool. And um, he tells me different things that I have to work on, and, but he also praises me when I do great things. So um, it's really cool to have a dad that played a point guard position like I, did, like I do. So it's really nice. Where does he, where is his advice most helpful, would you say? Where does he help you the most? Um, he just helps me um, try to keep my head in things and stay positive. And um, being a point guard, you got to talk a lot on the court and got to make sure you're positive with the whole team. And um, he helps me in that aspect and then helps me with um, playing defense, playing offense, and just little things on the court that I need to improve on. Maybe you answered that, but where do you believe you've improved the most from when you arrived here to where you are now? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just um, probably my jumper. I didn't shoot as much my freshman year and um, got in the gym and made sure I got up a lot of shots and just try to get better within that aspect because I knew um, being a passing point guard, people were going to be able to take that away and I had to do something else to help my team out. And um, I think I just put in a lot of effort and work just to try to get that jumper and I think I did a pretty good job at it. That's uh, something I know you kid him about because, of course, Sean had many great attributes. Shooting wasn't one of them, but uh, do you give him a bad time in that regard? Uh, a little bit. I mean, he always jokes with me that he didn't have to shoot because he had so many great players on his team. But I, me and him joke about it a lot. And, um, yeah, he's, he's always telling me that he has a better jumper than me, but I know I have a better <laughs> jumper than him. But um, we joke about it a lot, but he was a great player, so doesn't really matter. <laughs> he got it done for his team. In a lot of ways, this has been a challenging year, and, and certainly everybody who plays the game wants to, to have great years. That doesn't always happen. Um, as a leader of the team, and, and you yourself personally, how difficult is that to handle? Uh, it's frustrating at times. I mean, um, we are having a pretty great year, and then we lost a couple of our players, so that's definitely frustrating. But um, every day we've been coming into practice and just trying to get better by March, and um, everything's been pretty positive for the most part. I mean, coach comes in and just talks about getting better, and um, we have to stay positive with the circumstances that we've gone through. And um, despite us having kind of a losing year, you know, we've we've stayed positive, and it's still a great team to be around. We still love to be around each other, and. Um, we still go out and play hard every night, and that's pretty much all you can ask for. So we've talked about what your dad can do to help you and what he has done. What do you, how do you help the young, the young players in the program? You were once one of them. How do you now, you're the veteran. Uh, I know that's odd, yeah. <laughs> but how, how do you help? those young kids? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just telling them to stay positive. I mean, there's some freshmen who don't get to play a lot, and um, I went through that my freshman year, and um, I just tell them every day you got to stay positive, just continue to work, and um, your time will come, and um, once your time comes, you got to produce, and um, I think they've done a great job staying positive. They um, come out every day, they work hard, and I think that's the biggest thing I've been trying to tell them, and then just to enjoy the moment, because it goes by fast, and um, you're at a great school, you have a great coach, and you got to enjoy it just because it does go by so fast. I can't believe I'm a senior, so. <laughs> you know, I was going to ask you that very <laughs> thing, because when you start, it seems like you can hardly see the end of a senior year. Here you are, a senior, you're a, a, a majoring in mass communications, 
what would you like to do uh, once your basketball days are over? Um, well, after playing basketball here, I hope to go play somewhere after this and continue to play basketball for at least a couple more years. And then um, after that, I'm not really quite sure what I want to do, but if I can get into coaching, I think that would be a really cool opportunity. I mean, I love the game of basketball, and I want to be around it for as long as possible. Well, she is just an outstanding basketball player, great point guard in the Mountain West Conference, and, of course, the leader on her team, Markel Dent. And, Coach, I had the chance to see all of her dad's games and broadcast all of the, her dad's games. He was an outstanding point guard. She is a chip off the old block, right? But I'll tell you one thing, and her dad would admit this, she can shoot it a little bit better and score a little more than he can. Outstanding player. Well, I was a young assistant coach at New Mexico when Sean was playing, and boy, oh boy, I do have memories, especially of him making those two free throws against us to take them to the NCAA tournament and remove us from. But I got to tell you, we share a lot of time with the young ladies, and Markel is not just the leader of the team, not just the best player on the team. She has an inspiration, she has a spirit about her, and she has it all the time fun young lady to be around. She's going to have a lasting impact on this program. Boy, I'll say one of the great cowgirl basketball players of all time, certainly Markel Dent. You stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back right after this. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Shiat is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. Well, the Cowboys are heading down the stretch. Mountain West Conference play, to be sure, they'll play on Saturday in Boise against the Boise State Broncos. Six games to play in conference play and in the regular season. Three on the road, three at home. I know I'm looking way ahead here, and that's not right. But uh, let's back up a little bit. You do get the so-called buy midweek this week. How will the Cowboys make use of that? Does it come at a good time, Coach? Well, it comes at a great time. We're the last team to get a bye. But, you know, something said about rhythm, and we've had rhythm. We've played two games a week now for six or seven weeks. So this comes at a good time. We're just battling the flu bug and seemingly over it. Good time for them to get away from Coach Shy. Good time for me to get on the road, do some recruiting. And even better time, maybe to put a few more chinks in the armor in terms of the offense. You bet. Cowboys, as you said, getting rid of that flu bug. What about bumps and bruises? This is also a good time to get those healed up. How are the Cowboys physically overall going into this final stretch, Coach? Well, reading about so many other teams in the country, we're blessed. We're in pretty good shape physically. Our, we have three guys, the big three, that have played the most minutes. They seemingly are in good shape. But again, this is an opportunity to rehab a little bit, to do some extra shooting. We will not get back on the practice floor with Boise in mind until Thursday. Well, there you go. Boise State Broncos. They're very good at home. Uh, uh, always have been since they came back into the league. They've been a formidable foe. Very good basketball team here. Veteran team. Yeah. They have a lot of returners. They hit you with a, a different type of unique approach because both of their post players are deep three point talents. So you have to honor them close to the basket. And in particular, you have to be ready for quick threes. We'll be uh, a little bit in better shape this time. Of course, that was the game that the Mountain West decided to suspend Josh Adams. So hopefully, Josh will give us a little extra enthusiasm a little extra talent on the floor. These are kind of the dog days, are they not? The gut check time, six games left, so you've got two-thirds of the conference season done, a third to go, and jockeying for position, all that kind of in play right now, aren't you? Yes, this is the time of the year, February, as I tried to describe to the team. It's gut check time. Every team is on high alert. Offensively, defensively, every game is important to position you for your tournament because the upcoming tournament really decides in so many cases who will and who will not be attending the NCAA tournament. As you look at this team right now, Coach, two-thirds of the way through conference play, boy, they have played so hard, left it all on the line. This is a fighting bunch of Cowboys, isn't it? Well, the surprise for me was exactly what you say. In June and July, with the six seniors gone and new players, six freshmen, six sophomores, you are concerned and worried, how will we compete? In particular, how will we compete 
against the better teams on the schedule. We, in fact, have played our very best. We've come up with some huge road games. We've set some records. Sort of something to put in the back of their heads when tournament time comes. I was going to say, this road thing is no big deal for the Cowboys. They've played very good games on the road, won some big road games. Doesn't seem to phase this bunch at all. No, some of our best efforts, uh, Mexico State, Mexico, Denver, have been on the road, even falling short. There's been no difference statistically on this team home and away. The only stat that stands out right now is our turnover margin. A lot more turnovers on the road, a lot more turnovers in the losses. Hopefully we can fix that because the last couple weeks we have improved. Well, looking forward to that stretch run. It all starts Saturday afternoon in Boise, Idaho, as the Cowboys take on the Boise State Broncos. Come back next time. Take a look at the highlights with us right here on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shire. For the head coach, I'm Dave Walsh. So long, everybody.